So in this segment, we're going to be discussing um, the UK suspending some arms licenses um, to Labour, uh, to Israel even, um, and kind of some of the implications around it, some of the discussion around it. Well, just before we came on air, I spoke to a Palestinian journalist living in Gaza, Gada al Khord, and she told us that where she's living is completely unsafe. So you have to prepare yourself every day, day by day, or hour by hour, or minute by minute, what is coming next? We don't know what, what to do, how to secure our life, how to secure our food, how to secure our work. So it's a difficult circumstance that we live in now for one year. And we can see we, we, we live in this under, uh, or under this situation almost one year. The UK has suspended the export of some military components to Israel. And I wanted to ask what your response is to that. Well, it's a good sign and a good step from the UK to, to suspend this uh, export to Israel. At least they said it's, uh, it's 30 licenses out of 30 uh, of 350 licenses of uh, armored equipment uh, or uh, license for, for armored equipment they are exporting to Israel. This is a good sign and we hope that other countries can do the same and even UK can suspend all the 30, 350 uh, equipment for Israel because this war should be end as soon as possible. We lost everything. We uh, Gaza Strip is uh, inhabitable anymore. Like uh, we are living in this uh, in, in Gaza Strip and we know that uh, it's an you know, the, the, you know, I agree that, you know, from the pictures I've seen as well, it's completely decimated. The Gaza Strip is uninhabitable for anyone. Um, you've got stories of things like cholera outbreaks, you know, stuff that you, you only see, you only saw really more commonly um, in kind of the 1900s. And it's, it's come back, those kind of illnesses, because of the fact there's no clean drinking water and things like that. You know, Labour says 90% of the arms exports to Israel will continue with only a few paused. Alami announced that Labour will suspend just three out of 350, which um, I can see why um, the journalist she had spoken to would see that as um, a, a win. But ultimately, like, if it's the case that Israel been found to have been breached in breach of international law by um, UK lawyers, all of the arms licenses should be um, revoked, really. And this is from O'Brien. What the government has tried to do is draw a really difficult distinction between equipment that would be used by Israel to defend itself and equipment that could be used by Israel to break international law. And that will include parts for fighter jets, helicopters, drones. So 30 out of 350. It looks a little bit like nibbling at the edges. It certainly doesn't send a message to Israel that we are going to curtail your ability to kill people. It simply says some of this stuff could and possibly has been used to commit serious violations of international law. So we're going to try and specify and identify which bits of equipment fall into that category and we're going to suspect it, i don't think it'll be the toughest thing to do you can look at uh defensive equipment like helmets and body armor versus offensive equipment like guns um, and missiles the only real difficult would be components for like planes and stuff but planes are you know really offensive weapons not defensive ones and the use of those the timing is uh, unfortunate for want of a better word given that six hostages were uh, killed by Hamas in the last couple of days. But David Lammy's explanation for that would be that he has to tell the House of Commons the findings of the report and the conclusions that he's arrived at at the first possible opportunity. The question is, is this the same legal advice that um, you know Cameron got when he was Foreign Secretary? And also the fact that, you know, these hostages could have come out okay, could have still been alive, had um, Israel negotiated the release of those hostages. Um, and the other the other thing is the fact that um, Israel blames um, you know Israeli citizens blame Netanyahu for for their um, for their murder effectively. So that's one of the other interesting things. You know, you saw the kind of use of things like skunk water uh, and other such devices used on protesters in uh, Tel Aviv over um, recent days, and just show you that the tactics they used on people in the West Bank they are also using on their own citizens. I think it's called. Um, Imperial Bimrang or something to that effect. 
absolutely certain okay. that we're not allowing this sort of thing. And I think what worries me about... This is former uh, Tory MP Anne-Marie Trevelyan, or former uh, foreign minister, should I say? David Lammy's statement yesterday is it feels like, and I completely understand, uh, this was a really important issue for the Labour because, Party, um, you know, felt by many through the course of the election to demonstrate uh, a... Uh, less sort of solid Israel focus. But if, if the legal advice had said there's a breach of international law, he should have shut down all the licences. He hasn't done that. So that says there's, to me... Because it's, because it's future-looking. And well, it's the future point is the law, the, but, but the challenge in... on international law is very broad, and we had never OK, seen let's, let's say what... And this is one of the things where, you know, you see Margaret Hodge trying to defend the government over this. Um, but... You know, if, if it's the case that the report says Israel are in breach of international law, then how can we continue to keep arming them? And I think she raises an actually good point there uh, when she mentions that. Uh, and this from the SNP. But could I press on, on the issue of the UK recognising that the Netanyahu government's use of UK weapons poses a clear risk of the violation of international humanitarian law? You'll be aware that there is no legal definition between what is a, an offensive weapon and what is a defensive weapon. So why and on what basis, if there is, in his words, a clear risk of the violation of international humanitarian law, why has he not imposed a blanket ban on Israel until that risk has gone away completely? Yeah. Foreign Secretary. Well, can I say to the... Uh, honourable gentlemen, that we have one of the most robust export licenses. Okay, let's 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 break this down, right? Sold snipers to Gaddafi, Colonel Gaddafi, right? Um, during around the time of the civil war, just before it in uh, Libya. So where was that robust arms license? Sold weapons to the Saudis whilst they were committing um, potential genocide in Yemen. Where was where was those robust licenses then? selling weapons now to Israel who have been plausibly accused of committing a genocide in Gaza. Where is that robust legal advice now? Licensing regimes uh, in the world. It's a complete joke, mate, honestly. Um, you know, there's allegations that David Cameron sat on advice that there was breach of um, a uh, breach of law in Gaza. There was one uh, Tory MP, I can't remember her name, Alicia Kearns, I want to say it was, um, who talked about how Cameron had actually got legal advice saying Israel were in breach of international law. This was during the start of the year. There it is their MP Kern about the evidence. So UK government lawyer says Israel is breaking international law, claims top Tory in leaked recording. So she actually mentioned it earlier on in the year so it's clear that the government advice was that but you know Cameron just ignored the government's legal advice and we have seen legal advice change um, you know depending on what the uh, Prime Minister what MPs have requested we saw that during the Iraq war and um, this from Zara Sultana saying yesterday it was confirmed an Israeli F-35 jet made um, in part in Britain was instrumental in a recent attack on a safe zone in Gaza killing 90 people ha um, hours later the UK government refused to suspend licenses pertaining to F-35s all arms sales to Israel must end so what what she what the government could do is just suspend the sale of those these components to um, Israel because again you know fighter jets you know do you, do you class it as an offensive weapon or as a defensive weapon it depends on what its fundamental use is but i would always argue it's an offensive weapon so it's a complete joke to be honest i mean i, I you know we're getting to semantics oh well, 30 is better than you know not suspending any of the licenses you know it's you know therefore labor are better than the conservatives but if that's your bar it's incredibly low and incredibly disappointing you know all sales should end you know, we, we have seen the pictures from Gaza. It's it's complete. De it's, it's uninhabitable. It's completely decimated. Whole blocks of apartments flattened, completely destroyed. There is no way. I don't understand. I don't know the people who survived this conflict. I don't know where they will go. And, you know, although UK's, um, you know, Israel only make up, I think, 1% of our arms exports or, you know, we only export 1% of Israel's worth of weapons. Um, it's There's partly, you know, getting stopping these um these sales will be symbolic, but it also put a marker out to other countries saying, well, we're, we're drawing a line here saying this, what they're doing is um, horribly re re reprehensible and we're suspending our support to them. What are you going to do? And that's the one, sometimes that's that's what you, what you can do as a country. You know, we saw Spain and Ireland and um, I think Norway condemn Israel. That wasn't designed to stop the war, but it was to say to countries, look, we should take a stand against the country. Um, you know, we should condemn another country for their actions. And you should all stand together on this one. That's, that's all you can do is try and build a big enough support base. The only country that doesn't have to do that is America. 
because they're in such a unique position but other countries can't you know necessarily pull that you know throw their weight around and tell um you know a country like Israel to stop only the Americans could really do that but there is a point to taking a stand and then trying to lobby the Americans saying look this has to stop you know they can't keep going on like this and trying to put pressure on the Americans to do something and if a lot of the European countries got together and did that I think it would have somewhat of an impact or at least try and make some of them change their minds um, but anyways, I'm going to leave it there. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Like, comment, share, subscribe. Support the channel on Patreon if you can. And hopefully I'll see you in the next one.